Okay, for, so for this last part of the lab, for the challenge section, I'm gonna to put together an audio recording to walk you through the process of saving your work on GitHub if that's something that you want to do. And again, I just wanna emphasize that this part of the project is completely optional. Um, so this is, there's an important difference between uh, Git, uh, which we're using for this uh, particular example, and Subversion. And that is that Git is designed to support multiple repositories. Normally what you do with Git is you clone a repository rather than checking it out. So what that means is that I have a copy of the repository on my local machine. Um, but it means that the process of saving your changes to Git is a little bit different than it is uh, with Subversion. Uh, with Subversion, once you commit your changes, they exist on the remote repository. With Git, you commit changes to a local repository, and then there's an extra step of pushing those changes to a remote repository. Um, so I'm just gonna walk through um, an example of this. So I've got our lab one project checked out here as I described in the previous walkthrough, and I'm gonna make just a tiny little change to it. So I'm gonna say, hello Git um, in hello world. I'm gonna uh, make sure that works, okay. Now, you'll, the process of seeing your changes is pretty similar with a Git project than it is to a Subversion project. So if I uh, right-click on the project, in this case is Lab 1, and then I say Compare with Head Revision. Now, in this case, it's going to ask me to open up a new perspective. This is called the Team Synchronizing Perspective. And when I do that, what's going to happen is that I'm going to see, uh, in a way very similar to what I saw before, that there's a, um, there's a change to hello world.java. So on the left, that shows me my project. And if I browse into source main Java and look at hello world.java, and you may have made changes to other files, you'll see a side-by-side -side view of those changes that's pretty similar to what we saw before. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, commit my changes. So I'm gonna go back into the Java perspective, although I suspect I can do this from here. Um, let's go into the Java perspective, and then I'm going to right-click on the project. Um, you'll also notice that um, Eclipse helps you see where changes are. So in my project, I can see that there's a little caret next to hello world.java, and that's to remind me that this file is different than the copy in my repository. Okay, so now I'm going to go down and I'm going to uh, go to the team dialog and open commit. And this is going to open up a different but similar looking dialog to the one that I'm used to from Subversion. It asks me for a commit message. I'm going to say change message in hello world.java. Um, okay, so I'm going to hit commit. Now there's two options here. So Eclipse gives me the option to commit and push to my remote repository at the same time. But I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to commit, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So I'm going to commit, and the changes, um, this should go away in a minute. Um, let's see here. There are no staged files. Okay, great. So I'm, I'm done. Um, once that's done, I can close that window at the bottom. And now, okay, so now you're going to see an interesting uh, thing over here if you looked at the left in the Package Explorer. You can see that next to my lab one project, there's a label that says lab one master, and then it says up arrow one. So what does this mean? So what this means is that, remember, Git has two repositories. It has my local repository, and it has the remote repository that lives on GitHub. So what's happened here is that there's a change in my local repository that doesn't exist on the GitHub repository. So let me try and push this. So again, if I don't go into team, I can uh, go over and there is an option under there called push to upstream. And I'm gonna click on that. Um, now, okay, so what happens here is that this brings up a login dialog. Um, and the problem here is that I don't have permissions to push to this repository. So this repository is maintained by the core staff. Now I do have permissions to push to it. So I have a username and password that would work in this dialog, but you don't have permission to push to it. And so here's the problem. Where am I going to put my changes? So I haven't given the students in the class the permission to modify this repository and I'm not going to. 
Um, and you know, if I hit cancel, it says not authorized. Um, so what I need to do is I need to create a new GitHub repository to store my changes to this project. So let's say I go over to github.com. If you don't have a GitHub username, now is a good time to create one. Um, if you register, there's a way to sign up for GitHub so that you get a bunch of these great deals they have for students, including unlimited uh, private repositories. Um, but I'm just gonna use my own uh, GitHub account, which is gchallen. I go to my own page, and what I need to do on GitHub is create a new repository. So I go to my home page, I click on repositories, I click on new, and then it's gonna ask me for a name, and I'm gonna call this lab one. Now, it is okay in this case to leave this repository as public because there's no, um, well, it depends. I mean, maybe if you're working on a new game that's gonna revolutionize the world and you think you're gonna make a, a billion dollars off of it, you might want to uh, say this is a private repository, but we've already made the starter code for this lab public. So there's no real need to, to hide this from anybody. So it's perfectly fine to, to set it as a public repository. Um, and then as description, I'm gonna put my changes to lab one. Okay, then I hit create repository. Okay, once that's done, um, what I have now is I have a new link. Remember before we cloned from a GitHub link that pointed to our CS125 Illinois user. Now I have a GitHub link at the top here in HTTPS. I'm gonna copy that, uh, that points to my user uh, to a new repository that I've just created. So now what I'm going to do in Eclipse is I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna go back through that push dialog. So I'm going to go over to team, push to upstream, and I'm gonna replace the repository link that I had before uh, with one, well, I guess I can't, I can't do that yet. Okay, let's, I think there's another step I missed. All right, so team, I'm gonna go back to the team menu and what I need to do, ah, here we go. I need to uh, configure push to upstream. So I open this dialog and it's asking me, so here's the thing. The question is, when I push changes from my local repository, where are they going to go? Right now you can see that they're going to github.com slash cs125-illinois and I don't wanna put them there because I can't, I'm not allowed to. So I'm gonna hit change. I'm gonna put in the new, um, the URL that I just created. And then what I'm gonna do, and um, I'm gonna go and get my github.com username and password. Sorry, this is my last pass. So I have to type my last pass password to get it out. Okay, so my user is gchallen, my password is this, you can, save that in your secure store or whatever. I'm gonna hit finish. Okay, so now what you should be looking at is configure push for remote origin, the branch is master, that's the branch I'm working on. Uh, the URI should po point to the new GitHub repository that you just created. And now I'm gonna hit save and push. Uh, it's asking me for my password again. Uh, maybe I wanna hit save in secure store. Um, okay. Okay, and now it should say push to lab one origin, okay? And now if I go back to GitHub, to the page, so when I created the repository, there was a page that says like quick setup, if you've done this kind of thing before, that's what the repository looks like when it's empty. Now, when I refresh that page, I see, hey, I've got code in here. So this is my changes to uh, lab one. And now when I make changes to this project, when I do commit and push, What's gonna happen is I'm gonna commit the changes to my local repository and then I'm gonna push those changes to my remote repository. And that will work because this is a remote repository that I have access to. So this is a very common workflow and this is something that people do all the time when they work on open source projects. So when I find a problem with somebody's code on GitHub, what I typically do is I clone their repository. Now I have my own copy of it that I can modify. I make any changes that are required to fix the problem, and then the process completes with something that's called a pull request. And a pull request means I ask the person who maintains the master repository or the sort of the main copy of it that I started with, who publishes it to other people and maintains that code, to take my changes and integrate them into their project. Um, 
So, but this gives, but this is also something like if I wanted to take starter code from GitHub and build it into my own thing, I can clone the repository, get a local copy of it, and then start saving my changes to GitHub in ways that don't interfere with anybody else. Um, so that's an example of how to do this for this particular project, and uh, hopefully you were able to follow along.